Hi guys, and welcome to my WWE Hell in a Cell reaction video. So yeah, last night we had Hell in a Cell. Um, <laughs> so if you guys watched Hell in a Cell, you will know what the main talking point of this video is going to be. But before I get to that main event, um, yes, I have eight other matches to talk about. Even though only four matches were announced on this card, yeah, five just got added on the day. <laughs> so... Bloody hell. So, yeah, I'm going to go briefly quick over the rest of the card before I get to the main event. Um, so, pre-show match, we had Natalia going up against Lacey Evans. I didn't care. Uh, this is a match that's been happening. This is a feud that's been going on on Raw for a while. Um, Natalia beat Lacey Evans with a sharpshooter. Yep, nine minutes. Uh, she hit a punch on Lacey Evans after the match, which was cool. But yeah, this, is, this easily could have been on Raw. I don't know why it was on pay-per-view. Um, whatever. Um... The next match, we probably easily match of the night. The match was kicked off the whole show. We had Becky Lynch defending her Raw Women's Championship up against Sasha Banks in a Hell in a Cell match for the Raw Women's Championship. Really good match. Eas easily, easily match of the night. It was a 21-minute slobber knocker. These two women went at it. Brilliant match. Loved it. Um, really even. Like, both women got lots of different spots. Some really cool, inventive spots throughout this match from both women. Like, I loved it when... Um, she had basically um, what um, Sasha hit like that running knee. She does the, the two knees on on Becky on one of the ladders outside the hell, hell outside the cell. Looked really awesome. Um, there was also a really cool spot where um, like she popped up this chair in the corner with the kendo sticks and she put Sasha on it. And then Becky just went Ooh, boom on leg dropped Sasha on the chairs. That was a cool spot. So, and then then suddenly. Um, Sasha started throwing in loads of these chairs, but she, could, she, she couldn't put Becky away. There was a really cool spot. I think she hit, she hit um, the knees on, on, on through a table um, from the top rope. So Becky still kicked out. It was an awesome spot. Um, and then the end of the match, basically, Becky suddenly reverses, I think, a bank statement. She goes for the, um, what, that, the finishes. She does, she does that onto the steel chairs, and then she hits a disarmor, and Sasha taps out, which was strange. Um, yeah, I really thought Sasha was going to win here. They were finally going to give her the win after after the DQ finish at Clash of Champions. But no, Becky wins clean with a submission. Um, so the reign of the man is continuing. And bloody hell, what a reign uh, Becky Lynch is having now. I mean, I mean, yeah, she's had that Raw Women's Championship now for 182 days. I mean, I mean, part of me is thinking now, if Sasha isn't going to be the one to beat Becky, if that, if I guess the Sasha feud's done. Who's going to beat Becky? I mean, I guess she's going to hold on to it. Probably still Survivor Series. We're going to get her versus Charlotte, maybe, at Survivor Series. Um, but the way they're booking Becky with this belt now, I honestly think she might hold it for a whole year. She might go on to hold it all the way to WrestleMania next year. Maybe Ronda comes back and beats her for it. Maybe a returning... Um, not returning. Maybe someone from NXT, like a Shayna Baszler. Um, comes when challenges Becky, but yeah, I really, I'm really disappointed with Sasha. I really thought they were gonna let her win, but no. Um, yeah, so they brought Sasha back as a heel turn, a big, and then, yeah, they just let Becky continue winning. So fair enough, fair enough. I don't know where they're gonna go with Sasha from here, but we will see. Easily match the night though, really good match, really good match. Then we got a tornado tag team match. We got Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns up against Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. Um, this was fun, fun, a fun 60 minute match. Um. Eric Rowan and Luke Harper just dominated most of the match. I mean, they were just left, right, and centre. Brian and Rowan could barely get any offense in. It was basically a, this was like a forty-minute squash until they came back at the end. Rowan, Brian, Brian, and Rowan, Rowan, um, and yeah, it was like there were some really cool spots. Like Eric Rowan, people say he always so boring, but fucking hell, he's a good wrestler. Eric Rowan. I mean, he's got I love I love the chemistry he has with Luke Harper. Like they do some great tag team stuff. Of course, when they were there, they were. Um, the, the Bludgeon Brothers a few years ago. So, <clears throat> uh, and yeah, this was a great match. I loved the table spot, basically, which they're about, they're about to put Brian to the table, but then, but then Brian Hurricane Ran is um, half off the table. Then Roman comes back, spears uh, Eric Rowan to the table. <clears throat> they get back in the ring. Then Luke Harper, boom, oh, he gets, I think he gets super kicked. Uh, and then, boom, spear on Luke Harper. One, two, three. And yeah, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns win. Uh, no double heel turn or double turn from Daniel Bryan. Going, it was me. No, nothing like that. Just a clean win. And I guess I guess Bryan is fully turning face again. 
I'm, which I'm a bit disappointed with. I was really hoping for Dan, Dan and Brian just at the end going, no, and attacking Roman, and it was me all along. But no, we didn't get that. And they, they hugged after the match. Like, yeah, well done, bro. They hugged. Uh, yeah, and Luke Harper took the pin, which I'm not a fan of. I mean, he's just come back, and he's already taking a clean pin, but I guess they have to semi-protect Eric Rowan, didn't they? So, whatever. And yeah, I guess, is this the end of the, of the feud now? Is the, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper going to go into the ta tag team division again? And uh, is Brian and Rowan, uh, is Brian and Rowan just going to go off and do their own things now? What's... I don't know. I do not know. Maybe, maybe Brian and Rowan will be on Team Flair and Team Hogan. We will see. But yeah, good match. Good match. First two matches were great. First two matches were very solid. Then we got a match which is out of the blue, which got announced in the pre-show. We got Randy Orton going up against Ali. Um, uh, it was hard to get invested in this match because there was literally nothing on the line. It was just it was just a pre-show feud. Okay, you think you got you got enough? To, <clears throat> I'm going to kill your momentum, Ali, and all that. Randy was saying on the pre-show, but yeah, we got a match, and it was a it was a good solid 12-minute match. I mean, what do you expect? It's Ali, who's an amazing worker, really good, and Randy Orton, who can pull off a great match of anyone. He's just a veteran now, isn't he, Randy? Um, and it was a good 12 minute match, some really good spots. Like Ali's high flying cruiserweight style up against Randy's just completely plain, boom, rest, hardcore rest, old school wrestling style. Uh, and yeah, I loved the ending. Loved the ending. So basically, Ali's about to go for his finish. But then Randy hits an RKO, but Ali does this really cool counter. We like we put doesn't he doesn't sell it, he's like holds himself up with his hands and, and it looked so cool. I've just never seen anyone do that with an RKO spot, so that was inventive. And Randy thinks he's won, but oh no, he gets rolled up, pinned, but no, Randy gets out of it. And Ali goes for that like that like, double roll finishing he has, but then another one, boom, and then Randy, no, catches him this time, RKO. One, two, three. And yeah, that was a really cool finish. Randy was just like that, look at it, look at it, like and yeah, he gives gives um, Ali a little pass, like putting him over going, you did good, kid, you did good. And good match, good match. I mean, I would have liked Ali getting a big rub here, but I guess he needed to give Randy a bit of a win, you know, after he, he's lost back-to-back -back pay-per-views against, against Kofi. So yeah, fair enough, give Randy the win here, but Ali did look strong. I mean, that RKO counter was, was really cool. So yeah, and I really do like Ali, and I do think there's a very bright future ahead of him um, in the next couple of months, without a doubt. And then this is where the show started to... Um, yeah, it kind of peter out. The first four matches, well, the first three matches, not counting the pre-show. First three matches were solid, very solid. And then we got to matches which I, I just didn't really care about. So, yeah, we had a tag team match, the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. Yes, the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane, challenging Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross with the champions. Uh, yeah, wasn't didn't really get, pay attention to much of this match. I just don't care about the, tag, the Women's Tag Team belts at all. It's ten minutes. Um... And yeah, but the finish was cool, basically. So Asuka spits green mist at uh, at Nikki Cross, like a la Tajiri for the Attitude Era. My God, my God. A green mist. Isn't that, like a, isn't that a DQ? I thought that was a legal, legal move. Whatever. She hits green mist. And I think she goes for her finish or something. And she goes for the pin. And yeah, she wins with the green mist. I'm like, wow. And yeah, the Kabuki Warriors, the Kabuki Warriors are the new women's tag team champions. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Uh, I just, I really don't like Alexa with Nikki Cross. I just do don't like, well, I don't like them. So, yeah, I'm happy Asker and Kairi Sane have got something, even if it is these meaningless tag team belts. But whatever, it's something cool. And maybe a slight heel turn, because they both did kind of act a bit heelish. Kairi Sane and Asker doing this match. I mean, that, that green miss, that's not, that's not a face wouldn't do that. And yeah, Asker's mouth is all green, it's all dripping down her mouth. Like, Ugh, horrible. But yeah, fair enough, good finish. And I'm, I'm happy Asker and Kairi Sane are the champions. And, Hopefully they can get a good reign. Whatever. Then on to the next match. A match was just, just nothing. It was just a filler match. I mean, why do we need a filler match? But whatever. It was a six-man tag team match. Yes, the Viking Raiders and Braun Strowman going up against the OC. Uh, yeah, only eight minutes. And wasn't a lot. Well, not a lot to talk about here. The Viking Raiders did get, get their spots. I love Ivar. Ivar's great. Just doing all those little power, jumping up spots. I mean, the guy's like, what, over 300 pounds? He's doing all this cool sports stuff. It's great. Braun Strowman did like his running, boom, like his running shoulders on all the OC. But it ended with a, a disqualification when I think the OC just started to beat up Braun when they weren't tagged in. So it ended with a DQ. Uh, eight minutes. Yeah. It wasn't the first shit. Just a, a DQ, really. And yeah, I'm going to be saying that again soon. <laughs> Whatever. And that was that. That was that. Done. <laughs> just, just a filler match completely. And on to another filler match. We've got Chad Gable going up against King Corbin 
in a, in, actually this was an okay match, 12 and a half minutes, um, a lot of history here because they've had, of course, King Corbin beat Gable and King of the Ring. They've had another match, I think, pr prior to that, after the match. Uh, and this was a good match. It was a good solid... I mean, Chad Gable's a brilliant wrestler. Just great, solid, all-round wrestler, Chad Gable. Great. And I think he's got a very good back future ahead of him, too. I really do think they can push him strong next year. Maybe he could possibly have a WWE title match next year, Chad Gable. I think he's that good. Uh, we will see. And King Corbin, we all know what. Great. He's great. Great. He's King Corbin. Baron Corbett's just one of the great heels right now. I'm loving his work. He's such a great heel. And it was a good match. Um, good top 12 in a match. Corbin did dominate a lot of the match. But Gable was like trying to get offense back in, back in. But a bit every now and then, but Corbin did dominate a lot of the match, but he just couldn't put Gable away. And then Gable won, I think, with a, a really cheeky roll-up pin. I think that's how he won. Yeah, a cheeky roll-up pin. And uh, yeah, and Gable's like, <laughs> on the ramp like that. And Corbin's like, what? What happened? What? Uh... It was really good. Um, and yeah, fair enough. It's a little, little cheeky one for chat for Shorty Gable. Shorty Gable! What? Even they went, Shorty Gable! That's like his new nickname, Shorty Gable. Yeah, that's his new gimmick because he's, because he's small. Do you get it? Isn't it funny? Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Um, then on to the second to last match, we had Charlotte Flair going up against Bailey for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. Yes, a Clash of Champions rematch. And, um, yeah, it was a solid 10-minute match. Uh, I can't think of too much of what happened in this match. There was some good spots. I mean, yeah, some good starts off outside the ring. A very evenly paced match. Obviously, a lot better than the match. Because the Clash of Champions match was, like, what, two minutes? <laughs> so this was a lot. This was better. Uh, and, yeah, it ended with Charlotte hitting the figure eight. What, and... Bailey taps out, and I was like, what? So, they, oh my god, they've done it. They've done it. Charlotte is now a ten-time, five-time, five-time. Charlotte is a ten-time women's champion, uh, setting, setting your records. And yeah, I'm really surprised that they did this here. I really thought Bailey was just going to retain again, maybe with Sasha's help, but no. So yeah, but it was not a good night for Bailey and Sasha, was it? And uh, yeah, that's how they choose to phone off. I mean, I, I wish that they'd have done this on a bigger, a bigger show, like a I don't know, like a Royal Rumble, or maybe they could have taken this off to WrestleMania. But no, they've done it, and Charlotte is now a 10-time women's champion. Fair enough to her, she's going to go down to one of the greatest of all time. Um, I mean, no one else has held 10 women's belt. I think the closest that came to her was Trish Travis, or, or Lita. Uh, so yeah, fair enough. Fair enough to Charlotte, she's one of the greatest of all time. I mean, yeah, a lot of those title reigns, though, were like very short, weren't they? Just not, not trying to put sour on it, but, you know, there were certain a few of those title reigns that last, lasted, what, a few weeks, if that. But still, 10-time women's champion. Fair enough. Come forget that to Charlotte. Yeah. I'm sure the fact that she's Rick Blair's daughter had nothing to do with the fact she's 10-time champion, but <laughs> I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. <laughs> but, yeah, fair play to Charlotte. <clears throat> and then after the match, Bailey was, like, having a hissy fit. Like, is this her fully turning heel now? Because it's... I've got weird, what, I don't know like the character's been the last couple of weeks, Bailey, but, yeah, she was, like, having a hissy fit. Like, go ahead! Get off me! Looking at all the fans, so acting like a ten-year-old kid. So, yeah. Okay. Oh boy, here we go. Now on to the main event. <clears throat> okay. Oh, yeah, we are we. <laughs> okay. So Seth Rollins, the US champion, going up against the Fiend Bray Wyatt, a Hell in a Cell match for the WWE US Championship. I was really looking forward to this match. Easily, I was looking for this match so much. I was like, just can we get all these filler matches out of the way? So, yeah, finally got to it at the end. Loved it. The first, and so let me just say, the first half of this match was was good. It was good. Um, and the, like, so basically, there was this red lighting throughout the whole match. I guess I was trying to put the, the mystique of the fiend, trying to, make, trying to make it more spooky, more scary, more intimidating. So, fair enough, I thought it was interesting. And yeah, the first half of the match was good, so... The, the Fiend was hitting all these moves on Seth, like no selling, like Seth was whacking the Fiend with kendo sticks. The Fiend was just no selling it. It was awesome. I think he hit like a, uh, I think he hit an early curb stomp or something on the Fiend. The Fiend just got up straight away. It was great. I was loving this. I was like, oh my god, this is great. Like the Fiend's just not going down. Nothing, nothing. It was like just like the house show matches. Everything the Fiend's doing, everything Seth throwing at the Fiend, the Fiend just keeps kicking out and like, kicking out. He just keeps getting up. Like the, Seth can't put him away. Loved it. And then they go outside the ring for a little bit. The Fiend's like whacking Seth into the um, the cage. But then Seth starts to get a bit too much offense in. Uh, I think he then he hits like a several curb stomps in a row. And the crowd start booing. And I was like, oh no. Please don't tell me this is going to be the end. Yep. Yeah, he starts hitting multiple curb stomps on The Fiend. But The Fiend kicks out at one. <laughs> and Seth's like, what the fuck? What the 
fuck? And then the Fiends just lie in the middle of the ring. And then I think Seth hits a pedigree, a kick out at one. And the Fiend just, and then I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not enjoying this. Why is the Fiend taking all this punishment? Come on, come on. It's like turning into a bit of a squash. And then Seth hits like, what, I think five curb stomps in a row. Another one, I think it was like minimum 10 curb stomps in this match. I think he hit more. And, but, and this Fiend just keeps kicking out. I'm like, what the hell? What's going on? Why is the Fiend taking all this punishment? And that he's just lying there in the middle of the ring. And then Seth's like, starts getting all these chair shots. Gets a chair, gets a seal, and just whacks the Fiend in the face with the chair. Really, really, really cool. The Fiend kicks out at two. <laughs> I'm like, this is getting, what is going on? And then Seth just goes crazy. He gets a ladder. He just puts that on top of the Fiend. He gets a chair, puts that on top of the Fiend. And then he gets a toolbox, like this, this blue toolbox. And he just starts, like, push, push, push. he whacks the Fiend with the toolbox. And I'm like, this is getting a bit uncomfortable to watch. Why is the Fiend taking all this punishment? Come on, I'm not enjoying this at all. Why is Seth so dominant here? Come on, the crowd were booing. The crowd did not like it. The crowd wanted the Fiend to win this or at least have more offense in. And then Seth gets a steel chair. <laughs> He's going nuts. And the, the Fiend just lying there with all this stuff on top of him, like not moving at all. Like, oh. I, I, well, I thought at one point, is the Fiend just going to go <laughs> and burst up out of all that rubble and stir stuff? Like, no. That would have been awesome. That would have been so fucking cool. But no, the Fiend just is just lying there like a jobber, getting battered. I'm like, what's going on? And then then Seth gets a sledgehammer. I'm like, ooh. And, and, I'm, and then I was a bit worried, like, oh, no. No, please, please, please don't. This is, is this going to end, end the DQ or something? And then the ref's like, no, ref, the ref's like, no, stop. I mean, you can use you can use a steel chair and a ladder and, and a toolbox, yeah, but, but a sledgehammer? Oh, no, that, that's too much, Seth. So, yeah, and Seth's like, no. But then he's going to he wax, he wax the fiend with a sledgehammer and then ding, 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 ding. The bell rings. The bell rings. And I assume that was a disqualification or a no contest. In a hell, in a cell match, there's a disqualification or a no contest. What the fuck, WWE? You, you fucking botched this big time. Jesus Christ. And the crowd go nuts. They are booing like I've never, like, what the fuck? I was so pissed off. What a shit way to finish this match. It's a hell in a cell match. How is there a DQ? It, okay, I'm not going <laughs> to... Oh man, I was so, I was, oh, and the crowd were booing like crazy, like what was that finish, what was that, such a stupid finish, and honestly I, I wasn't a fan of the ma second half match either because Seth was just dominating the Fiend, the Fiend shouldn't be getting dominated, you saw how dominant he was over Seth, well, I was over Seth on all the roars with the claws, like this is a freaky character and you've, Oh man, if you weren't gonna give the if you weren't gonna give the Fiend the Universal Title and you weren't gonna have Seth lose, why have this match? I don't get it. I I get I know neither guy could take a clean pinfall. That's what was my prediction. But why have it end like this? It was such a stupid finish, man. Oh, and then it, it got worse. The crowd just took over. So, but basically, so at the end of the match, Seth's looking, at, and then the Fiend just then he suddenly wakes up. <laughs> Hits the claw on Seth after the match is finished. Yeah, why didn't he do that during the match? Why couldn't they do that during the match? Why did he have to just lie there? But yeah, the Fiend suddenly wakes up. <laughs> hits the claw on Seth. And then they go outside the ring. And then, 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 then the Fiend hits a sister Abigail on Seth on the, exposed, on the exposed floor outside the ring. But as he's doing this, the crowd are just chanting, Restart the match! Restart the match! I was the one like, come on, please, please you cannot finish, finish like that. Restart the match! And, but they weren't going to win because the cell had already been lifted up. And then it got worse. There was an AEW chant, a big one. This wasn't like a few fans. This was half the arena going, AEW, AEW. Fucking hell, man. WWE, you have botched this big time. You've completely turned all the fans against you. I bet they thought in the creative, this is going to be a great finish. Yeah, the fans are going to love it. Like Seth couldn't put away the fiends. You went full nuts. Yeah. Well, it's back, by the way. It's back, by the way, big time. You've... The, the fans were so pissed off, there were massive boos. Even when The Fiend was hitting the Sister Abigail and a claw on Seth, there were still boos. Oh man, so I guess, and then obviously the final the final shot was The Fiend just looking at the camera, but the, and then it cuts to black, and the, there's still boos, you can still hear the boos. It, oh man, so bad, so fucking bad, man. Oh, why did they do this? I, I'm trying to think of any positives here, and there are a 
few positives here and there. At least the fiend didn't click a clean loss. At least he and he does look semi strong. He took all that punishment. Seth could just couldn't put him away. The only way Seth could put him down was with that was like whacking him with all these weapons. He just couldn't put the fiend away. And then the fiend at the end of the match still does get up and hits the mandible claw. So he still does look strong. Like the fiend just he couldn't put the fiend away. That's the story here, isn't it? From the from the K -Pay point of view. But just that DQ, oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. And it's been met with universal pan by the fans and critics. Oh, man. I cannot wait to see what happens on Raw tonight. I think there's going to be a lot of boos on Raw tonight. Still going by that finish. Uh, maybe they're going to do a rematch tonight. But I think they can't, can they? Because Seth's going off to do the world to be, to be in the Team Hogan, Team Flair match at Crown Jewel. So I guess this feud's over with for now. And what's The Fiend going to do? Is he going to be at Crown Jewel? He is, he is on the poster, but... What's the thing they do at Crown Jewel? I guess they go... Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> and, yeah, the video... The, 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 they've shown a clip of this the match on YouTube, and it's got over 20,000 dislikes. Yeah, WWE. Yeah, 20,000 dislikes. Oh, well, they never learn, do they? They never learn. Oh! Okay. So that's that. Oh, my goodness, man. <sighs> so, yeah, guys, that was Hell in a Cell. Uh, so, yeah, weird, weird show. I thought Becky Lynch and Sasha were great. Match the night. The, the Tornado Tag Team match was good. Randy Orton and Ali was a solid match. Chad Gable and King, Gorman, King, King Corbin was good. Charlotte and Bailey was fine. Um, the Kabuki Warriors, the Kabuki Warriors, and, what is this, just filler, filler. The Viking Raiders and stuff was filler. Charlotte and Bailey was fine, but it was nothing amazing. I do think they pulled the trigger too soon on Charlotte's ten time, whatever. And the main events, the first half of the match was good, second half of the match was shit, awful finish, and you pissed off all the fan base, including me. Oh! So yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm so pissed off. So yeah, what were your views on that main event on, and Hell in a Cell in general? Um, so yeah, I will be back. Um, I'll be back with my crown jewel. Uh, prediction video. Uh, when is Crown Jewel? Uh, next one. So I'll probably be back um, probably in about two, two-ish weeks with my Crown Jewel prediction video. Uh, yeah, Crown Jewel. Can't wait. <laughs> so yeah, guys, thank you all very much for watching and uh, yeah, let him in.